check, check, check. All right. Let me check my voice. Okay, so uh, today I am going to show you how to use the alert window and the callback functionality so that you can actually do something with the alert window. It's a pretty common thing to have uh, in an app, so it's good to know. All right, let's see. Where are we going to start? I guess I'll show you what our little GUI playground looks like. I was messing with this the other night just to try to get some cool colors and stuff. So let me just show you this blank project. So it has a cool uh, purple or red gradient with a little kind of like white content area, kind of, you know, trying to fake that kind of frosty glass looking color that a lot of UIs use now. Um, yeah, so what we're gonna do is set up an alert window. And we're also gonna set up a button so that when we click the button, an alert comes up and it's gonna show yes, no, cancel. And then we'll be able to do something in the callback function according to whichever one was chosen. And I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to use the alert window right here. It's pretty easy. Uh, let's see. It doesn't have a default constructor, so you got to pass it a title, message, uh, icon type, and the associated component. And for us, we're just going to use null pointer. Uh, and I'm also going to make this a, um, a smart pointer, the uh, a unique pointer. Uh, just because I think it's cool and fancy. All right, so let's see, we're gonna start in the header and let's start with our button. So, uh, so this is gonna be a text button and we're just gonna call this, um, I guess I'll call it alert button. And just like always, I had to make visible alert button and let's see, we're also going to give it some nice colors because by default, let me show you here, alert button dot set button text. Let's just put it here. Get with, I already know, um, beforehand that this is a good size. So I'll show you what I'm doing here. We're going to call set bounds and we're just going to say get local bounds. Uh, instead of calculating an X, Y and size and stuff, we're just going to say get local bounds with size keeping center so that we can give it a size and it'll just take whatever size it is and shrink it down and keep it in the middle. Uh, so we'll give it size for width and then height or say size, uh, half the size and that's quick and simple and I think it'll look good. Let's see.
Yeah, okay. So here's the button, but look how dark and undefined it is. It just looks ugly compared to our UI. And it's not too difficult to get it to match. What we're going to do is blur button dot set color. We're going to get the color IDs. Uh, let's take the text color. I think for text color, I was doing juice. Uh, let's see, colors. And I was doing white smoke, and I was giving it an alpha. Uh, probably 0 0.75. And we'll take that and do the same thing for text color off. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to do the button colors. So button color and button color on. And we're going to make both of those transparent. I don't think there's a difference between transparent black and transparent white. Or if there is, it's for something else that I don't know how to use. Because whenever I choose transparent black or transparent white, it does the same thing. So, all right, that, that, and then you'll see that it looks almost good, but then we'll need to affect the outline. So yeah, the text is fine, and I think having the background transparent is great, but this border is terrible with this color scheme. So we need to make that white as well. But if we go to text button and we look at the color IDs you'll see that all we have is button button on text color off and text color on we don't have an outline and that's because um, the outline color for the text button is set by the uh, or is using the combo box color ID and the only way to figure that out is to dig through the the um, the look and feel. So, like, if you go to Juice uh, GUI Basics, look and feel, and I don't know which one it's in, uh, but if you go through the CPP files and find where the button is drawn, you can see what color code is used to color the outline. And for the button, it's using the uh, the combo box. So let's paste another line here. Go into uh, combo box. And then it's probably called outline, yeah, outline. And then we'll just take the same white color here. Let's see what that looks like. There we go, that matches. A very flat, um, What's the word for that? I forgot what the word for this kind of frosted glass look is. There's a, there's a word for it. The UX community has a word for everything. Okay, so we've got our button. So we need to do something with it when we click it. And for us, for this tutorial, we're going to do um, the alert window. So we're going to assign a lambda. So that anything you put inside these curly braces will happen whenever the button is clicked. And what do we want to do when we click the button? Well, we want to show the alert window. So like I said, we're gonna create an alert window. And uh, we're gonna use a unique pointer. The unique pointer is cool because if you, um, or let me, let me back up a second, I'll say it like this. If we don't use a unique pointer, I would have to say juice uh, alert window. And then I'll just say alert window. And I would either have to pass in the constructor arguments right here. Or if I didn't do this, I'd have to go into the constructor right here. And say alert window and pass in the arguments right here. So sometimes that's not always going to work because sometimes uh, you, you're going to create an object that requires a argument that isn't created until later. I've gotten to that situation before and that's when you should use the smart pointer. Uh, so I'm just going to do that here. So unique 
pointer and you just tell it what class you want to use alert window and then I'll call it alert window um, and now I don't have to construct it right here I can construct it you know where I need it and the unique pointer is cool because when it goes out of scope it automatically cleans up its memory so you don't really have to worry about um, remembering to either delete it or um, you know set it equal to null pointer or something like that so uh, let's see let's see if that error goes away yep good so I'm actually gonna uh, construct it in the the uh, the lambda I don't know if it's the best way but I, I didn't really have any problems so I don't I don't know um, maybe in a more complex project it might um, be an issue but it's kind of the same setup that the juice um, file chooser example uses. So that's why I just assumed it was probably okay. So alert window is equal to, and this is following the same syntax that you use for the, um, like the slider attachments, which is something we use all the time. So you'll take the unique pointer, in our case, alert window, and set it equal to std uh, make unique and give it the class which is alert window and um, right here you would pass the uh, arguments so it is title message the icon type and the associated component so I'm just gonna say alert for the title um, the message is gonna be uh, I don't know choose an option for now and the message what, what is it again uh, message box icon type and uh, there's a couple different ones to choose from there's question info none warning I'm just gonna I don't know I'll use info and then lastly uh, is the associated component which I'm just gonna put to null pointer Uh, let's make sure that that doesn't have any issues. Okay, cool. And now we can show the alert window. So we've got a couple of options. If we scroll down here, show message box, just a show, show async, show message async, show okay cancel, which is the one I'm going to use just because it has a bunch of different options. You got three different things to choose from. Um, yeah, so let's do show OK cancel box and then we'll talk about how um, or we'll talk about the order of operations that everything happens. So let's say alert window and remember it's a pointer. So we're going to use arrow um, show yes, no cancel box. So this is going to take in a couple things. So message box icon type. Uh, I'm going to just use the same thing this one the title I guess I'm gonna make that the same as well the message choose an option uh, okay so this is uh, important so what you want your three buttons to show because it's a yes no cancel box that means there's gonna be a yes a no and a cancel button but you can call them whatever you want uh, but I'm just gonna call them that because I think it works in a lot of situations. And cancel, if I can spell. Okay, there we go. Associated component, null pointer as well. And then here's the other important part for us is the callback. So this is what's gonna happen whenever you choose one of these yes, no, or cancel buttons. Um, and the syntax is pretty similar to um, assigning a lambda for like on click. So if we look at, let's ignore this for a second, go to documentation. Uh, if we go to, let's see. Yeah, modal component manager callback. Or actually that's not it. Sorry, uh, let's see don't remember where I saw. oh yeah so if we go into more options um uh 
Yeah, so in the callback, you can see that um, if we assign or if we give a parameter to the callback, um, it will give us one of three returns for each button. So when you click cancel, you'll get zero, yes, you'll get one, and two, you'll get no. And I was a little confused when I started looking at it because I was trying to assign a callback and I didn't realize that um, it actually required that you put in an argument. So for example, you're gonna say juice uh, modal callback function and then create. And it doesn't really matter which one we choose. That uh, will give it some brackets. This, very similar to our onClick method, will give it some uh, parentheses and it will give it a body. And don't know why that went all the way over there. What? All right. It doesn't want me to move the curly braces. So let's put our Oh, this is weird. Why doesn't it want to move? There, that's a little better. So um, this is actually not going to build because we didn't pass in an argument. So I'll show you. Hopefully I'm correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no matching function call for the lambda. So what you have to do is actually pass it a argument that will uh, equal this right here. So zero, one, or two. So we know it'll be an int. So do int, and then you can call it whatever you want. Um, result is probably the easiest. And what will happen is result will equal whatever you choose. So zero for cancel, one for yes, two for no. So we can test this by debugging result. And hopefully this builds. Mm hmm Cool. So let's expand that a little bit. Okay, here's our pop-up. You can see our title and our message, yes, no, cancel. So if I type yes, we got one. I type no, we got two. And cancel we got zero cool so it's working the way we want so that's pretty handy already just the way it is um, yeah so let's also besides getting the result um, I'll show you what happens um, thread wise so the the alert window is gonna block whatever thread it's on so we can, let's see, um, what would be a good way to show? Okay, so what if, what if we call resized um, and then we do something in resize that uh, we can actually see? So like, let's just run through 100 numbers or something. So this is not going to run until you click a button. Oh. Oh, wait, no, no, no. So that ran because um, resize runs, you know, when you open the window. So let's close that and delete that. If we click the button, so the resize didn't run until we, yeah, click a button. Cool. So that's just kind of a little example of what's happening. You would maybe think that since we're in the on-click event, 
that it would kind of like just go through but it really it blocks it so if you're doing anything that relies on like if you want to be able to move a dial or something while the window is up you won't be able to so for example actually yeah let's just put a dial i mean a, uh, a slider on the window Really? Let's see, let's do get local bound with, I guess I'll do size keeping center again. Actually, you know, I don't have to worry about that. I'm just going to put it in random spots. So let's start it at uh, 100, 100, and make it uh, 300 wide by, I don't know, 100 tall. Okay, so here's the slider. We can move it. And now we can't move it while the alert window is up because it's blocking everything. So we can click it and we should be able to see it. So since that's the case, and I didn't even try this, but it's probably a cool thing to try. Um, I wonder if the async method won't block. So alert window. Um, yeah, let's do show message box async. Because there isn't an async version for the yes, no. I wonder if show async, if you can just set up the message box options. Probably so, but I'm not going to uh, struggle my way through that on the stream. But yeah, let's try the show message box async and see if that's any different. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of that. So that is alert window show message box async so the icon type that the title well we're not actually choosing an option but i'll still put it that and let's see message box async and then you've got the button text and the component and the callback. Okay, so button text, um, I don't know, let's call it button. No pointer. And then lastly, the callback function. I'm just gonna copy that part right there. Great, callback, let's say this. I assume int result will work for this as well. And uh, let's put our curly braces, and I don't know why that goes all the way over here. <laughs> this formatting is kind of a nightmare. <laughs> okay so this is the lambda so let's uh let's debug result and see what happens Okay, so it gives us zero. All right, so let's see. 
I can move the slider. This should be async. Oh, and I still can't move the slider. Okay. Okay. Uh, there must be a method for using it asynchronously and being able to actually do something uh, while it's up, or maybe not. I don't know. thought I should just try it. Yeah, I don't know, whatever. It's still pretty useful. I'm gonna get rid of this one because of the yes, no cancel boxes. I think more useful in more situations. You could use this for like, um, like I wanna build a, a sample player so that I can like make uh, samples and instead of just giving it to people in like a folder, I can like create a, a plugin that's a sample player so that you get the the folder of samples and you get the little plugin that lets you like um, preview them and play them and stuff. So like, let's say you chose a file, like, like, let's say you had the DAW open and you deleted a file from the folder while it was open and the UI still showed that file there. You might be able to do something like this, where if the resulting file doesn't exist that they chose, you could show them a cancel box and you could say, uh, you know, uh, let's see, for example, let's assume that the file doesn't work. You could say, would you like to quit the app and locate the missing file? And then if they say yes, uh, we could quit the app. So I forgot, is yes one? Show yes no cancel box. Um, yeah, yes is one. Okay, so let's do uh, if result. Uh, we could do juice uh, application base and then uh, quit. All right, so let's see if that works. Would you like to quit the app and locate the missing file? Question mark period, very nice. Uh, yes. Cool, it quit, all right. So that works. So I'm gonna get rid of this because that's kind of unnecessary. Yeah, okay, there we go. Yes, no cancel box. Uh, I think giving that kind of um, pop up to the user whenever there's some kind of issue is really nice. It, it makes the, the app feel more polished and more solid. Um, cause a lot of plugins are like, you know, it's just processing audio and has a GUI to control it. And that's about it. Not a lot of, you know, extra stuff going on. That's kind of helpful for the user. So we could do a couple of other things. Um, you could put one of these alert windows, like in your get state method. So for example, um, if you've seen my other videos, I always in set state, I always have an if statement that checks to see if the tree is um, valid. So maybe if the tree wasn't valid, we could throw up a uh, pop up window to the user, uh, which would be cool. And um, let's see, is there a way that I can, I don't even really know what makes the tree invalid. But um, we can put the alert window on the audio side. It doesn't have to be on the GUI side. Um, it would be better if it was because the, if you put it in the audio processor, when the audio processor is running, the GUI is not necessarily open. 
So if you try to do some kind of GUI related thing from the uh, processor, you might uh, be asking it to do something that it can't do, which is not good. Um, although that's for trying to access the editor directly. I don't think that's the same case for just calling a function like uh, the, the window. Uh, let's just move it over. And I'm just going to put it in um, prepare to play. So that should open um, whenever it the window opens. Yeah. Now the question is, is that going to block <clears throat> the audio thread? And I think there's probably an easy way to check. What we could do is... Um, Actually, if we just, yeah, if we just build, we should be able to run the plugin in Logic and we have nothing going on in the... There's our old IR example. Let's see if we have the... Yep, here it is, okay. Okay, it's not blocking the audio thread. It's just blocking the uh, message thread, I guess, the GUI thread. Oh, and I forgot, that quit the app. Okay. I wonder if that, um... oh wait, so that quit the plugin and, oh, okay, it caused the logic to quit, okay. Let's just see real quick uh, if there's anything. Can I do command F in this? Oh, no, I can't. But I could copy and paste this entire thing into uh, VS Code and then do a word search, but oh well. That's not really that important. Let's do it again uh, and not choose yes. So I'm just going to have the audio playing. I know y'all can't hear it. Um, so I'm just gonna. Okay, it didn't stop. Oh, so it looks like, uh, yeah, it's crashing it. Um. So yeah, I think putting this in the the uh, audio side is not a good idea. Let's just go back and get it back to the way it was. Okay, there we go, back to normal. Okay, cool. Yep, so that's the uh, alert window. I think it's pretty useful. Um, oh, you know what, I think, uh, let's see. Oh, actually, there's, there's a bunch of cool stuff in here we could explore. We could set the message. Um, that could probably be handy if we have several ones kind of like uh, nested inside of each other. And we could change the message based on what we're trying to do. Trigger the button click, add a text editor. That's cool. 
Oh, we can create a password box. Hmm. Oh, add a combo box to it. Add a block of text. Add progress bar component. Well, let's uh let's try this progress value. All right. What we're going to do is uh I guess create a value, okay? So we're going to say float. Actually, I'm going to start trying to use a uh, double whenever I can uh instead of float. Um double uh I don't know, progress. equal to 0, 0 0.0 and then I guess we could continually uh, or continuously update it so let's do private juice timer and then we need the timer callback uh, yep override right And then we will start the timer. Um, I don't know, 30. And it's probably a good idea to stop the timer in the destructor. And uh, Yeah, so let's take progress. Um, okay, wait, this needs to be between zero and one, apparently. Oh, you know what? Also, what I'm thinking is um, let's start the timer when we click the button. And then we'll stop the timer whenever our callback is done, I guess. Which, uh, at the end of this, I guess. And how are we going to handle this part? So we'll say... This is going 30 times a second. Uh, so we can say... Progress I don't even know what I'm, I'm doing. I'm just trying to think of something to make the progress bar move Because it's not like I have an actual Functional reason to use the progress bar. So if progress is less than or equal to one we'll say Progress uh, plus equals 0 0.01 and then I guess we could just make it slower so wait so 0 0.01 would mean a hundred times so if we did this it would take one second so this would take 10 seconds I think quick math all right let's see uh, and then we'll say I guess alert window set progress or what was it again? Add progress bar. All right, I have no idea if this is gonna work. Uh, 
Oh, I'm on EU. I sure didn't see a progress bar. You know what? I wonder if I should uh just move this uh out. Alert window, add progress bar component, progress. Um, let's make sure this is uh, running. Okay, it's running. We just don't see it on the uh, window. Interesting. Well. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird because it says add progress bar component, uh, but all it asks for is the value. I wonder if this has to be in the lambda i don't know well no because that doesn't get run until after so i guess it would make more sense to put it here but it actually shouldn't matter yeah i don't know Interesting. All right, well, too bad. I wonder if it has to be a certain... I wonder if it has to be a certain um, alert window type. Like maybe the yes, no, cancel doesn't work, but maybe the... Oh, also, what if... Um... Let's see that. I could try getting rid of the... Lambda and see what happens if I just do this. Hmm.
before I give up completely, I'm going to try the uh, message box async, and I will do something like this. Hmm. Oh, wait, show message box title, message, button, text, null pointer. Text show message. What show message box? No member named show message box in alert window. Ah, uh, the documentation must be a little bit behind. Okay, well, anyway. Too bad we couldn't get the progress bar thing to come up. Is there anything else cool that looks useful in a documentation? We could add a custom component to it. So I guess if you made some kind of page component with info on it, you could pass that to it. And that's about it. Add text block, add a text editor. Looks like you can use it to create a password um, entry. And yeah, okay, cool. So yeah, I guess that's it. Short and sweet today, but I wanted to, um, I'm trying to go through as many of the kind of functional things um, in Juice as I learn how to use them. Uh, just because a lot of this stuff is very useful for a lot of the non-audio parts of the application, which is pretty important because, um, I mean, half of the plugin is not audio. Half of it is GUI and other things. So it's good to know. So, yeah. Um, I will commit this. Um, add yes, no, cancel, window, and callback. So if you want to... Look at that in the demos in the Vitor DSP repo. You can uh, join the Discord if you're not in it. You can ask me anything, any time of the day. There's about, uh, I don't know, 80 of us in there. So, yeah, we'd love to have more um, people join in. Have some fun. You know, we could, we don't have to do all audio stuff. We could game, you know, whatever. So, yeah. Um, that'll be it for me today. Thanks a lot. I will be back Tuesday. Um, I think um, if I don't come up with something similar to like another widget to show how to use, I'm going to start working on some kind of little sample player thing. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll do that uh, Tuesday. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching and I will be back next time. All right. See ya.